Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, I have a really special guest with me, as you can see, uh, Imam Muhammad Tawidi, uh, leading reformer uh, for peace in Islam uh, in Australia. And uh, it's been a, a pleasure to uh, spend some time with him. Uh, last night, uh, I took Imam Tawidi to uh, his first major Jewish community event, uh, the Chabad North Shore dinner in Sydney. What, what did you think of it, Imam? Uh, greetings and uh, thank you very much for having me. I uh, honestly felt uh, at home. The uh, Jewish rabbis showed uh, amazing hospitality. The Jewish community was extremely friendly, which uh, makes me question why uh, is there so much hostility towards the Jewish community coming from the uh, majority of the Muslims in this country. And uh, my presence there yesterday proved that uh, peace can be established and uh, we can live together and, and love each other as well. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I, I wasn't sure what sort of reception you would get. And uh, I told the organisers that uh, Imam Tawidi was going to be at an orthodox uh, Jewish function. But um, we kept it fairly discreet. And uh, when you were there, uh, it seemed that everyone was very happy. Uh, there was no, you know, no aggression, nobody uh, uh, saying anything inappropriate and everybody pleased to meet you. Uh, everybody in that event was uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, not one person looked at me in a, in a very weird way, shall I put it that way. Uh, everybody had a smile on their faces when they looked at me. Uh, the people who knew who I was approached me, um, greeted me. I, I felt very, very welcomed uh, last night. And also, uh, I wish that would be the case if a Jewish person had come to the Muslim community. So what, 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 would, what would happen if a, a Jewish leader came to an orthodox, you know, orthodox, if inverted commas, uh, Muslim event? Um, it it kind of depends, but... Uh, in a time like this, where things are pretty intense, uh, they would greet and then straight away get into the politics. That would be a normal, a normal gathering. Um, I don't think it's very common where a Jewish would be welcomed in a Muslim community with the intention of becoming good friends and possibly even neighbors, as in communities, mm. instead of the the. Uh, let's say, the segregation of communities here and there? Well, I mean, obviously the hot button is, is Israel, and um, uh, that's a, a difficult subject to discuss with Muslims. But uh, I noticed uh, a couple of months ago you alluded to what the Quran has to say uh, about the relationship between uh, the Jewish people and Israel. What, what does the Quran generally say? Uh, the Quran basically lines out the land rights for nations mm -hmm. and uh, it's very clear in the Quran that the nation of Israel and the Jewish people and especially the uh, nation of Moses as the Quran refers to them who are the Jewish people of that time uh, they are to dwell in the land uh, the land is theirs it is Jewish land and I have said many times um, whether you agree with Israel as a government or not. I mean, there's opposition against the Israeli government within Israel. Of course. That's <laughs> not, that, that's not the, the, the point of discussion. Uh, the discussion, I believe, the point is, do the Jewish people who own this land have the right to have a government? And I believe that would only be fair because the Muslims did so in Pakistan when Pakistan was also created uh, around the same Mm. Uh, time. So okay. why is it okay for the Muslims to have an Islamic Republic of Pakistan on Hindu land, India, uh, and uh, the Jewish people can't? So uh, I'm not trying to say the Palestinians don't have rights. The Palestinians have rights, but let's not forget that the fathers of the fathers-in-law of Prophet Muhammad uh, did invade Palestine and converted people by the sword. Uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab, Abu Bakr, um, and these are our caliphs. We have to admit that this is our history. If they did so, 
and the people converted to Islam, then only their religion changes. The identity of the land doesn't change. Right. That's how I see it. So I look at it from a geographic perspective and a religious perspective. And uh, that's basically the, the way I tackle the, the, the issue. Well, if you use the Pakistan analogy, um, it, uh, the Jewish case is actually much stronger because the Jewish uh, heritage to the land of Israel uh, is 3,800 years. Um, I mean, it's, it's clear that Abraham purchased a cave to bury Sarah and the land around it, uh, etc. And we have uh, uh, confirmed archaeological Jewish heritage uh, going back 3,800 years, which is much, much greater than uh, uh, the, uh, the heritage in, in Pakistan. And the Quran, as you, as you say, in, uh, I'm, I'm told in four verses, actually uh, confirms the connection between uh, the Jews and the land of Israel. Uh, okay, uh, what, what's your view on the conflict that's happening at the moment at the, at the Gaza border? Uh, when we first heard the news, I was a bit worried as to why such a thing would take place. And uh, news spreads very quickly. What, what's said first sticks. Um, the uh, uh, Jews have killed 50 Muslims, 62 Muslims. And uh, off goes the, the media and their headlines and things are all put out there very quickly. So when the, the event takes place in about 10 minutes, everyone's already made their mind up that the Palestinians are oppressed. And lo and behold, Hamas comes out very angry, a terrorist organization, even more angry than they usually are. And they're upset that 50 of their terrorists have been killed. So now we know exactly who was killed. They're not babies. They're not children. Um, they're not mm. what uh, Hamas is saying. They're actually 50 people that have uh, been killed because their uh, plot to undertake a terrorist attack had failed. And 50 gunmen belonging to a terrorist organization that has a history of undertaking terrorist attacks around the world, breaking into a fence with guns and knives, with the planned intention publicly on Facebook that they're going inside to kidnap and take people as hostages. Yeah. That is not a peaceful protest in any dictionary. Uh, that was uh, a breach of, of border. That was a terrorist attack. It was a it was a planned terrorist attack that failed, and they paid the consequences. Right. Um, in, in, um, in, uh, um, in our discussions uh, before doing this video, um, I, uh, I invited you to consider um, doing joint events with us, joint, joint events with the Australian Jewish Association. I've raised with you uh, some controversial subjects. I don't want to discuss those subjects now, but it included things like um, anti-Semitism that arises out of uh, Islam, the effects uh, on, uh, that we see in, in Europe. Would you be interested in doing uh, joint events perhaps later this year? Definitely, because I believe it's very necessary for us as Australian citizens to get together and understand each other. And if there are problems, we provide uh, solutions to them. Now, I am not the leader of the Muslims in this country, but I believe that if I paved the way for discussions and dialogue, that would not only enhance national security, it will also educate the public that the problems that we have can be solved in such a way. Some of them might require uh, uh, the uh, help of parliament maybe, some of them, such as the, the halal certification mm -hmm. issue, um, some of them we could reach a, a solution amongst ourselves. But the main end aim from my side is that I present uh, a picture to the Australian people, the Australian majority, 
that look, a Muslim Imam can sit with a member of the Jewish community, a leader of a Jewish organization, and we can get along together, we can sit together, eat together, celebrate together, and if someone wants to attack your organization, I will protect you. Uh, if they're a radical uh, who wants to uh, target a synagogue, there should be Muslims that will form a line and uh, just, we're not police officers, but the, sim the symbolism there is that you're standing to show solidarity and help and support. And the same goes for the other side as well, which I have been shown absolute peace and welcome uh, last night. And uh, one of the rabbis actually texted me uh, just before I slept. I will read the text very short. Um, he said, I will include you regularly in my prayers. Wow. And this was sent to me just before I slept. Right. Um, uh, Imam Tawidi uh, was introduced last night to uh, a few of the leading uh, Orthodox rabbis in, in Sydney, and uh, it was a really, really interesting and uh, positive uh, uh, interaction, um, particularly because um, Imam Tawidi uh, doesn't gloss over the issues. He's prepared to talk about the issues, talk about the the need for reform, and uh, we'll work out the details of these events and uh, um, jointly make uh, an announcement uh, sometime in the future. Imam, welcome. Thank you very much. Thank and you. Uh, uh, look forward Thank to you. working with you more closely and uh, holding some public discussions. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you very much.